Hi and welcome to my channel So Amelia. I'm Amelia and this is where I talk all about making a handmade wardrobe for me and my children. Welcome to this week's video which is all about my five favourite dresses for spring and summer. Today's video, I really hope you enjoy hearing about these five dress patterns that I'm going to share with you today. They are some of my most worn and most loved makes for spring and summer. I shared a video about my favourite autumn makes back in the autumn and I'm really looking forward to sharing these spring and summer dresses with you today. So I'll jump straight in and share what I'm wearing. Now what I'm wearing today is the day dress by the Avid Seamstress. Now this is a really lovely pattern, it's quite a simple one. It has a fitted bodice with these short sleeves and then the skirt is simply gathered into the bodice and it's a nice A-line shape that falls to the knees. Now there are actually three different options for the front of this dress. There's the one I'm wearing which is the simple version. There is a version with a seam down the front and then there is a version with buttons down the front. Now I haven't made either of those versions yet although I have made three different hacks of the simple bodice version. Now unfortunately this doesn't come in the biggest size range, currently it is in sizes 8 to 18 so that's a size 32 inch bust up to a 42 inch bust. It has great instructions, it, there is an invisible zip that does the back of this dress up and the instructions for the invisible zip are fantastic. So if you are an advanced beginner or a beginner who just wants to give a new pattern with some new skills a try, this is a really excellent one. They also have a really interesting method for gathering the skirt into the bodice in this pattern which is to sew elastic onto the skirt which gathers it up for you which is quite quick and easy. Now personally I prefer gathering the skirt up with thread and inserting it into the bodice that way which I have done on my other versions of the day dress. But for this version I did use the elastic method and I'm so glad I did. It was really interesting to learn that way of gathering and certainly if you like a quick and easy method of gathering that's definitely one for you. So this version I made in a Rifle Paper Company cotton. I do love Rifle Paper Company fabrics. I did buy it quite a while ago. This was the dress that I made for Christmas 2020, I believe. The Christmas that wasn't. But I did enjoy wearing this on <laughs> Christmas Day uh, in our house. And I have worn it a lot in the summer as well. It's just a really light, easy cotton dress. Certainly one to be worn every day. Now because I enjoyed making this one so much, I wanted to play with it, hack it around a bit and make it again. And so I did. So this is the second version that I made. So it's made in a lovely cotton gingham and I think this one came from Felicity Fabrics. And it was a remnant so I'm not sure that it will be available anymore. But if any of the fabrics I'm talking about today are available, I'll pop them in the description box below. I will certainly put a link to all of the patterns that I'm talking about today. So you'll see I did use the bodice, the same bodice, with the darts. There are two darts in the bodice, one across the bust here and then one going down into the waist. So it is a beautiful fitted bodice. However, I cropped the bodice and added this curved waistband and then I gathered the skirt in as per the pattern instructions. But on the back, I decided to make it with more of an open back. So you'll see here there's a button at the top and then this comes down to a button here and then it opens down to the back. I just thought that would be quite fun for the summer and I do wear this a lot. I wasn't sure yellow was my colour but I absolutely loved wearing this in the spring and the summer last year and I'm looking forward to getting it back out of the wardrobe now that the weather is warming up. Now the great thing with the day dress pattern is that you can size the bodice to suit your style. So by that I mean for this bodice I made I think a size 3 on the pattern instructions which is about a size 12 which is actually not particularly fitted on me it has a nice loose feel particularly under the arms it's not too fitted so it's perfect for everyday wear but for the next version I decided to size down so the bodice is more fitted and it just gives me a slightly more structured and formal look to the dress and I made it in this really fun cotton canvas that I bought on eBay from a vintage seller and I added on some different sleeves so these are the sleeves from a free pattern actually the mood poppy pattern which I wore in my So Frugal video if you want to go and have a look at that dress. Now I loved the sleeves so much that I wanted to put them onto another bodice and I thought this bodice would be perfect. It's quite a simple bodice that it can really hold the structure of a statement sleeve really, really well. And I thought it would look really fun in this fabric as well. I just put the skirt on as normal. It's just the straight gathered skirt. 
but I just think those sleeves add such a lot of fun to the bodice. I didn't change the back of the bodice this time, I left that plain <laughs> as it is in the pattern instructions and simply hacked a different sleeve onto the pattern. So those are my three versions of the day dress by the Avid Seamstress. Now during lockdown when I got back into garment sewing again for myself, one of the first patterns I made was the hazel dress by Rosary Apparel. If you've watched my channel for a while I'm sure you will have seen me wear this dress and heard me talk about it quite a lot. It really is a very much worn part of my handmade wardrobe. So the first version that I made was in this red or rust coloured linen viscose that I bought from Rainbow Fabrics. It has softened so beautifully with wash and wear and I really love this colour. So the hazel dress you can see it's really thin straps, a beautiful square bodice that sits quite high actually which is really nice and then there are these darts for shaping and then a gathered skirt. This one also has pockets which is great. Now since I made the pattern, Janelle from Rosary Apparel has extended her size range. So now it comes in sizes 4 to 24, which is a bust of 30 and 3 quarter inches up to a bust of 40 and a half inches, which is great. The instructions for this pattern are fantastic. They're very, very clear with good drawings, but Janelle has also put a video about how to make this dress over on her YouTube channel. So if you're a visual learner and you want to have a go at this pattern, the video instructions are also fantastic. Uh, on the back, it does do up with an invisible zip. And again, this is one that has quite a fitted bodice. But what you can do if you prefer a slightly looser fit is just omit these waist darts here in the front and the back bodice, and that will give you a slightly looser fit over the waist. Because the skirt is gathered in, then you can just loosen the gathers off a little bit when you insert the skirt. That works really well for a lovely loose fit dress. So this was my first version of the hazel dress, and then, like I say, I wear this one at least once a week. I layer it up with a t-shirt underneath for the summer, or just wear it on its own when it's really hot. And then in the winter I layer it up over a turtleneck or one of my favourite Rowan bodysuits. So because I wore that one so much, I knew I needed another one in my wardrobe. I just find it to be such a practical everyday dress, especially in the spring and summer months. So this second version I made in a cotton ecat fabric from Etocri, which is another really lovely light fabric. Now I was a little bit worried about this one being see-through because it is quite uh, a light cotton. So I did line the bodice on this one. The previous version that I showed you was with a facing, which you'll know if you've watched a few of my videos, I don't love a facing. So this version I decided to fully line. Um, hopefully you can see that here. Now all I did was just use some black Cupro fabric that I had in my stash to line the inside of the bodice. I simply cut the bodice pieces out again uh, and then lined that the same way as I would have put in the facing. And then I simply hand stitched that uh, into the gathered skirt once I had attached that. So this is my second version of the hazel dress and another one that I wear all the time actually in the winter and in the summer months because I find it so, this one particularly, looks really great over a white turtleneck and tights. So all year round but particularly in the summer this one is so light and floaty uh, and I love wearing this one without anything underneath as well because the neckline comes up quite high uh, it doesn't feel too exposing uh, and it's just so comfortable and light when it's really warm. Now for my next hazel dress, it was actually the fabric that spoke to me first. I saw this border print and I couldn't resist it and I knew it would look really really great as a hazel dress. Now this is the border print and you can see it's a seaside scene which is just so much fun. Now I used two other prints, this is by Makawa. I used the clouds and seagulls for the top I used the border print for the middle of the dress, as you see here, and then because I wanted to add just a little bit of extra length, I used just the seaside print from the same Makawa, the same range of fabrics, just to add a little ruffle to the bottom of this hazel dress. Because this is a border print that I cut in half to gather into the skirt, it just meant that it was a little bit on the short side compared to my other hazel dresses but the ruffle makes it really wearable on a light breezy beach day and I have worn this at the beach. Uh, it's just so bright and breezy and fun for a warm summer day and again it's a style that I know and love and it got lots of wear in my wardrobe last summer. 
Now the next three dresses I'm going to share with you, I have only made one of each dress, but they are styles that I would love to make again as they get a lot of wear in my wardrobe in the spring and the summer. So the first one I'm going to share with you is the Untitled Thoughts Amelie dress. Now I will confess the reason I made this one first and foremost is because I'm called Amelia, it's called the Amelie dress, I just had to do it. But I did also absolutely love the style of this dress. It has a beautiful bodice with these really interesting darts in the front for shaping. It has a curved waistband, which I always think looks so flattering. A beautiful gathered skirt, which has heaps and heaps of swish and fabric in it, which is just so nice for the summer. It has two options for pockets. It has these patch pockets, which I decided to use on this dress because I wanted to play around with the stripes, but you can also make it with inseam pockets if you prefer that look. I made the sleeveless version for this one, but there is an option to add a sleeve if you prefer that look. And then there are two different back options on this dress. The first one is actually just a closure up here and then it's a fully open back. Now I prefer to wear a bra when I wear my dresses, so I knew that that wouldn't really suit me. But there is this one which is a bra friendly back option. And then it's buttoned down the back here. So it's such a such a lovely dress and I really love wearing this one particularly because of the fabric in the skirt, it's quite a full skirt and that just feels so swishy and cool in the summer months. I wasn't sure I would love the open back but I really really do, it doesn't expose too much and it's just such a lovely feature to this dress. Now she has recently extended the size range of this pattern, it comes in a B cup and a double D cup and it comes for a bust of 33 inches up to a bust of 59 inches. So that's great, it's a really extensive size range and I always love it when patterns have two different bust cup options. Now this is an intermediate to advanced level pattern she says on her website, but she also has a whole raft of excellent tutorials and I did find the instructions were really good for this dress. So I think if you were an advanced beginner that was really keen again to learn some new skills, this is definitely one that you could sew. She also has a really helpful tutorial on how to grade the sizes for this pattern. I always need to grade between my bust and my waist. I wasn't so worried about the hips on this dress because it's such a full skirt. Um, but I did have to grade, I think, from a C across the bust to an F across the waist. So because I needed to do that, it was quite useful to have that tutorial on her website about how to grade this dress. I made this in a striped cotton fabric. I believe it was from Elephant in my handbag. I haven't been able to find it again, but I'm sure you could find another striped fabric which would work equally well. I just thought it was so much fun to play with the different lines and shaping of this dress in the striped fabric. So that's my Untitled Thoughts Emily dress, another one of my favourites in my spring and summer wardrobe. The fourth pattern I'm going to share with you is my Nina Lee Q dress. I'm sure you will have seen this pattern before, it's one that I've really wanted to make since I started sewing again for myself. There are a few different views of this dress. View A is more of a 1940s tea dress with a short sleeve, and view B has a cold shoulder sleeve, and it's more of a sundress. And then view C is a skirt, which again is one I'd love to try making this spring summer. It has a beautiful high-low hem. It buttons down the front, and it comes in two different size brackets, the size 6 to 20, and then the size 16 to 28. So that's a bust of 32 inches through to a bust of 54 inches. So that's great that it's been extended because it's such a beautiful summer sundress. And here is the version that I made last summer. Now, you'll notice I made this in a Rifle Paper Company fabric again. Now, this one came from Sister Mintaka, and it's the Strawberry Fields Rayon in the cream background. I absolutely love this print and the rayon is so soft and swishy. Now because it was in this cream colour, I did decide to fully line this dress and I lined it in a white cotton fabric. Um, I did even line the skirt, I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to be see-through in any way, shape or form. There are instructions on how to fully line the bodice in the pattern, so that was really straightforward and actually I just attached a skirt to the bodice lining instead of attaching the lining to the skirt piece. So that was pretty straightforward to line it. The only other change I made to this pattern was to add a ruffle to the straps. I'm not really one for a cold shoulder sleeve, I just find it really annoying and try to keep pushing it back up on my shoulder again. But I did know I wanted a little bit of extra coverage, so I decided to make this ruffle instead. In my wardrobe, this really is my perfect summer sundress. It's the Nina Lee Q dress. Now the last of my five patterns is possibly one of my favourite dresses actually from last year that I made. I saw a few dresses on the high street with some colour blocked gingham that I absolutely loved and I knew I wanted to recreate them for my own wardrobe. 
So I found the Deer and Doe Orchidee pattern, which is so beautiful. It is a lovely v-neck dress with bridal buttons down the front, a very full skirt and beautiful statement sleeves. I had to have a go myself and this was my dress. Now I made it with all of these different yarn dyed cotton ginghams from Minerva Craft and then I just used actually a pre-made bridal button loop. There are instructions in the pattern on how to put elastic in for yourself but I just thought it'd be easier and more straightforward to use a pre-made elastic button loop uh, fastening. It comes as a strip and you can just sew it in a bit like a ribbon with these elastic loops on it and I just thought that would be a bit more straightforward than sewing in the elastic separately for each loop. Now the only change I made to this pattern was I did find the V was quite deep so I did add an extra button at the top here just to close it up a little bit for uh, my preferences. This again is a beautiful full skirt. It's a midi length skirt which I really really like in the summer. It's very light and floaty and these sleeves are beautifully finished with a little bit of elastic which just gives them a beautiful puff and they are very very comfortable. At the back you can see I colour blocked this bodice. It does come as one piece across the back but I obviously cut mine out in two pieces so that I could colour block it. And there is a side zip going up here. A side opening with a zip so that you can get in and out of it. Now the Deer and Doe Orchid Day dress comes in their full extended size range. So that is size 34 to 56 and that's from a bust measurement of 31 and 7 eighths inch through to a bust measurement of 57 and 7 eighths inch. So that's my fifth favourite pattern for spring and summer, my Deer and Doe Orchid Day dress. I'm so excited that the weather's warming up now and I'm going to get to wear some of these beautiful dresses again. I'm hoping that our summer this year will be better than last year as a few of these dresses only got a couple of outings as it was pretty cold so I'm hoping for some lovely warm spring and summer weather and then these will get a lot more wear this year. Now as a little bonus I'm just going to very quickly show you a dress that I made in my last week's video so if you want to see how it all came together do go across and watch that one after you finish watching this one. It is my Make With Mandy Mia dress. I'm so in love with this dress, I can't tell you. <laughs> I really, really think it's going to be a firm favorite in my spring and summer wardrobe this year. It's a lovely v-necked dress and it has actually got just simple short sleeves or long sleeves in the original pattern. I decided to add the Anna Allen Anthea blouse sleeves to mine just for more swish and drama. And then it has a three tiered gathered skirt. Now, I've seen so many dresses like this on the high street this year so I really wanted to have a go at recreating the look for myself and I love this end result. Now again this doesn't have a huge size range it comes in sizes 6 to 26 and it is quite a blousy fit. I ended up sizing down on mine in order to get a more fitted bodice which is the look I was going for so just a word of warning if you want to make this dress do check the finished garment measurements and decide whether you want a more blousy fit or if you want it more fitted you may also want to size down as well. But it was an, a lovely lovely sew and I can definitely see myself making more of these in my spring and summer wardrobe this year and I think this one is going to become a firm favourite along with these five other dress styles. So I hope you enjoyed seeing those five or six favourite dresses that I wear on constant rotation in the spring and the summer and I hope that gave you some inspiration for planning your spring and summer makes this year. If you did enjoy today's video, I would so appreciate it if you would give the video a like. And if you've not yet subscribed, it would be great to have you join my regular viewers as a subscriber. So hit the subscribe button below, it's free, and the bell icon so you'll be notified when I publish future vlogs. I'm looking forward to sharing my So Frugal Makes with you next week, so do come back when I share that video. But in the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful week ahead filled with lots of happy sewing, and I shall see you in the next one. Goodbye.